All right, so electronics. First things first, your stock servo is probably going to die pretty quick. My go-to replacement is the Emax ES08 MA2. So M means metal gear, A means analog, and 2 means it's the second revision of this servo. Um, unfortunately, on Amazon, you'll find a lot of knockoffs, and you'll probably have to end up buying a four-pack. Finding stock of stuff, especially in this day and age with COVID and all these people wanting to get into little crawlers. It's great everybody wants to get into it, but it also means that stuff can kind of be hard to find. So this is my go-to servo. It's in every one of these rigs except for this one. I picked up a used uh, crawler that had this Reefs 99 in it. Um, and since this one's got the extended axles and the, the big wheels, I threw that on there. Um, it would probably be fine with one of these little Emacs guys, um, but I had it, so it got used. Uh, Second thing is the ESC and motor. The stock motor is probably going to go out. You can do things like remove the sticker from it. I've heard people that say swear by it, say removing the sticker makes it last longer. It doesn't get as hot. Um, anecdotally, that one got the sticker removed, and it's still running strong. I got this one just a couple months ago. Didn't remove the sticker, and it doesn't want to go in reverse pretty much at all. So... Maybe removing this sticker would have helped. That one's got a lot of years on it, and it has still running. I should say a lot of use. It's probably a year and a half old because I don't think the C10 is that old. Anyway, what about brushless? Well, if you are an astute observer, this thing has been running the whole time and is just slowly crawling, which is a neat party trick. I'll, I'll give it that. Uh, the slow crawl is super cool, even if you had put an obstacle in front of it. It's just going to keep crawling at nice slow pace. This is a Furry Tech Lizard uh, along with the Furry Tech uh, large motor, the kind of older one. I, I don't hate it, but that big motor is heavy. And if it's comparatively high in the chassis. Uh, so it's super cool. It's super smooth. I'm just, I'm not sure putting that big motor in something this small is good. I think it's going to be, I'm actually going to move it over to the Atlas here. And that's going to be awesome. This is an Atlas 6x6. It's not a SCX24, but kind of in the similar vein. Um, and I'm going to get a small, this their new, Fury Tech's new smaller motor and put that in here. I'm just, I, that's, it's a lot of weight up high. And I kind of, again, I'm kind of a performance guy. So I kind of feel like the performance of that is not, the performance decrease is not great. But it is super cool. I mean, it's so smooth and short of it dying, it's not going to stop at, even at this speed. It's just going to keep crawling and keep going. Uh, there are other options out there for brushless motors, Mofo RC. But again, it's really hard to find any stock. I would have already put a, small, a smaller brushless motor in here if I could have found one, but they're all out of stock. Uh, so that brings me to brushed. There's really nothing wrong with brushed, especially if you have a, have a decent speed control. These furry techs will um, run a brushed motor, and they'll run them very quietly and very smoothly as well. So that's not a bad way to go to pick up a Furitech brushless controller. Just run your brushed motor with it or get one of the popular, their 050 size. Most of them are like 66 turn. Injora makes them. Um, a lot of times you'll have to replace your motor plate though because the holes are in a diff different position. So get one of those 050 motors. Get their, you should be able to spend 10 bucks on them. The barrage motors, um, you can usually find those actually in hobby stores. I've heard a lot of people have um, dead ones out of the box. Actually, when I bought the crawler that I used in here, that, that's a barrage motor right there. Um, it came with two motors, and the guy said that they're dead. They don't work. I just literally pulled pulled the plastic contacts out of the plastic housing and kind of bent them a little bit and re put, put them back in. They just weren't making contact. Both motors work just fine. So if you get a barrage motor that doesn't work, I suggest looking at those. Or since you already have your motor that you're replacing, desolder the wires off of your old one and solder them onto the new one and run it that way. Um, so I, I run brushed and everything else other than this one. And as you can see, this this is called a Warthog chassis. Um, you can find the designs for sale uh, or buy the, the prints off of Etsy. And uh, it, not a lot of room for electronics. So they're kind of just sticking out there like an eyesore. Um, I just did this to see if I would like the brushless motor. And like I said, I, I really do like the, the low speed and the smoothness of it, but I'm just not sold on the, on the high weight of it. 
Another uh, electronics thing is battery choice. Uh, these stock batteries, they're not bad. I have had two of them fail though, so the, the lifespan on them might not be great. Uh, maybe it's just a personal thing. Um, the reason I have this thing out here at all is it came with these little 400 milliamp batteries that I really like, and I bought some similar 450 milliamp ones just off of Amazon that they run great. And because I'm also into quadcopters, I've got some bigger two cells that I run as well. But if you notice, one thing about these, XT30s, JSTPYs, and JSTPH 2.0s. So they're all, they're all different connectors. What are you going to do? Well, what I do is I make up a little adapter to go from the JST to just the balance lead. So all these batteries have the same balance lead, and now it doesn't have to matter. I can plug any of them in. Um, so if you're getting a new motor, you can just clip off the leads from your old motor and use them to make a little adapter like this. I think that's a another, again, next to free thing that makes it much more easy to use. All right, that's getting pretty long as well, so we're going to chop it there. And in part three, we are going to talk about tires and rims.